this is Rose Richardson. Good evening, all. If I can introduce you to tonight's guest speaker. <laughs> if you come and get a seat, your foot will be here is better, actually. Uh, B's going to come tonight. As you see, she's been working for about a year and a half on this bureau. So she's going to do a... I'd rather if I ask if they ask me questions rather than me speaking every time. Yeah, okay. <coughs> so, obviously, B's been working on this for the past year and a half. We've got a wee bit to go, yes. Uh, so, first of all, to, to, to B, uh, who's our artist. So, welcome, B. Right. We've also got uh, Dylan Drummond here who's filming this for B's uh, personal archives and we'll put it up towards the university. Um, the filming will be purely on B and the mural, so don't worry. I know there's a few ugly faces out there and we wouldn't want to cause any damage. Okay. Um, it'll be a short talk by B and then any questions from the floor. Uh, B has asked me to stay up here, so God help you. You're going to have to look at me as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I don't, I'm not sure what you guys expect me to say about the painting. As you see, it's far from finished. I actually been painting this for two years. On my free time, at the same time, finish my... Uh, graduation and running my business, which has been a bit hectic, as you can may imagine. So um, I think the biggest concern here will be what I am painting and if it's actually based on Masonic philosophy and your, your beliefs. So I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have for me about the painting. Could you start off with a basic description and we'll ask questions? Fine. So um, I was suggested uh, to read the Hiram Key, that that will give me a base into what the painting was about. And so I did. And I discovered many things for the painting and for my personal research. What I could say is this is based on the, mas the Masons who start, they start on the East. So this is based how everything starts with Solomon Temple uh, having these three columns, beauty, wisdom, and strength. And it has many symbols as well that I changed from the lodge Lindors. Um, for example, I know that the numbers uh, three, five, and seven are very relevant to you. So I wanted to paint the shirups into three, five, and seven all together in one side and in another side. With these ones being the youngest as the mason starts in there. So the shirups are younger and growing older and wiser until the end. Um, in here we find the temple uh, of Solomon. And so the figures relevant in there are along with that uh, imaginary. Uh, we find the keystone, which is obviously halfway uh, to be completed. With the help of another one of you, uh, I have more information into what the letters are going to be here in the future. And Sorry, could you repeat what you just said there about the keystone? Yes, the, the, keystone, the keystone has a circle with certain letters around it, which it will be painted a posteriori. To the, to the whole mural. In here we find Jerusalem. And I wanted to represent, because we tapered, I wanted to represent Jerusalem with a big amount of water at the end to represent your place the temple is based in. Um, I'm pretty sure you recognize the Lamb of God as well, and also groups of three, five, and seven again. Uh, we kind of only see here one of the figures holds a, a sketch of a tool, uh, but I was uh, say that you guys wanted more symbols and other tools and things like that, but everything takes time. Okay. You had a unicorn of a top there, and it was rubbed off. The unicorn horse. Mm -hmm. Is there something else going up there? Yes, it's going another uh, horse, another unicorn. One of them represents Britain, and another one represents the Scotties. So it's the unicorn is represents Scotland, and the horse uh, British. So uh, that was 
came from the uh, painting, the mural painting, which is in Lindors. And at the same time that, for example, we don't have any figures on top, but they will be. Uh, is going the parable of the wine yard and um, Father Time and obviously the seven stars on the universe representation and so on. Yeah, I think not here first look, but we, we as a perfectionist, so we should the unicorn here, myself and Tony and a few others looked at the book, fantastic. We wasn't happy, so we should want to redo it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it happened uh, as well with some of the figures in here. I don't know if you have remembered to step in and seeing some of the figures a bit bigger, and I decided to rubber them off and then doing, do them again. Because if we think about the painting, it's not relevant who is doing it and, and whatever, but the painting will be here for a long time. So I want to get it right. Well, there is no much I could explain of the Lamb of God. Um, it's just, uh, well, I got uh, certain ideas that could help me. Uh, it's from John, uh, chapter John 1, 29. Uh, and because the cameras are here, i rather I give you the chapter that you can look into it. So we do not mention anything on our documentation, if, if that's OK. Tell me who the figures are on each side of the keystone, or what's going to be the keystone. Who is the figure on the left as I'm looking at it? Here, we have Solomon. How do you know that is Solomon? Well, his teeth, his color will be darker than their master, which represents him. Um, so Solomon, as I'm gathering information, was of much darker color of skin and, and uh, hair and I'm representing him at the end with some ropes that will be in color red. So that is Solomon who? Solomon who? King Solomon. King of, King of who? King of Tyre or King of Israel? <laughs> you, this is kind of a test. It's not a test, I'm just asking. Yes. <laughs> Solomon King of Israel. Who's the one on the right? The master of the lodge. Master. Who's the one on the left? Yeah, who's well for it? Who's <laughs> the one on the corner? Sorry. No, yeah. Here's an angel. An angel? Yes. And here's Hiram Abeth, who was lying lifeless. Yes. There's a lot of hard work into that. A lot of hard work. Yes, it has been. <laughs> I think the most cha thank you for that question. I think the most uh, challenging was because my background has not been an artist as a figurative oil painting, yeah. so I had to learn first the technique to deliver the work he was asking me for, and I enjoy every minute of it. But the most challenge thing, challenging uh, will be to get the structures as in a 3D perspective because that's a mathematical structure that I needed to, uh, to learn first. Um, yeah. You said quite rightly, B, that it's far from finished yet, your own words earlier on. When do you expect it to come out? So it will be finished when it's finished. It's and I say in this, finished. yes, and I say in this because every good work and Rome wasn't built in a day. Every good work that is, will be impressive and it lasts forever or, as, or for a long time, it has to be dedicated, you need to study to do it properly, and you need to deliver a good quality work. And that's not comes in two days. I mean, at first I asked, I say James, that I will be delivering in three months, which was unrealistic for any person expert on, the ma on, on this matter, will be, will be uh, unrealistic. But I committed to myself to do it. And so it's, I'm pleased with the progress so far, and I understand the frustration that, that comes of when it's going to be finished. I ask the question myself as well, uh, but as I say, dealing with university, and um, this is not relevant to the lodge, but it's relevant to my personal life and as much free time I can get, 
and is that I was working for five years to a person on a premises and the guy retired and uh, it was unexpected and it means that I need to run the shop now so this is the visu in here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I can say a, a few little words. Do you have an idea of some of the things? Um, yeah. when, when we started, I don't know if any of you remember, but even the carpet at the back, the square carpet, that took an enormous amount of work. I think we did it about three times to get the proportions and the, the dimension effect correct. And that, that took a huge amount of time, which went over it and over it. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. You don't mention the winding staircase. Yes, there is two, actually. This is a staircase to heavens that holds on the first steps the Bible, mm -hmm. the book of the Bible open. And this is the stairs that goes to Solomon Temple, which will have included, if you may look for them, the words in each step. What I did mention to James well, many months ago B, was I'd like to have seen the old CNI being more prominent in the mural. James did say to me he would speak to you about it. I don't know if he did. Yes. yes. Uh, it is going to be bigger. Uh, but uh, it, it must be, I think, more, more prominent. Uh, you know, I think you'd agree with that. Uh, the reason I painted there is because your cousin, <laughs> Peter, yeah. uh, is, which is not present tonight, um, he really wanted to see the eye as well. Um, so I, I glued it with a, with a photocopy paper. And so that was uh, getting all too old. So I painted that just for a base. Obviously, it's far from being real. As you can see, the hands of each of the uh, figures are not complete, all the details on the faces. But if you see uh, these details of the faces, they're very much more polished. It's like a way of a sculpture. So the, paint, the difficulty of the painting is that it comes really thick, as in a sculpture, as if you sculpture a rock. And from the rock, you want to get a figure like this. It takes time and detail. So the more amount of time uh, it will spend is just making the faces, the tiny details on their hands to make them come to life in somehow. If, any, if you look on B's Facebook page, you'll see she does tattoos of an eye. Of an eye. And the sort of eye that she tattoos is the sort of eye that will end up there. We'll give you a bit more better idea. It's far more realistic. It will be a lot more prominent and a lot bigger. We, uh, yeah, I don't want to say, yeah, how bad it used to be. Underneath the eye. Yes. Do you intend putting any sort of local landmarks to, to take out or look at us in? Is, um, you mean as in a name? Uh, no, what? Landmark. Uh, like a landmark. Like the Bell Rock or yes, I, I thought I thought really strong to do that idea because it will mean more for you as you are from here. So I left this side to make probably uh, you yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's easy to identify. A few of other things in here will be changing. And at the moment, I am graduated from art and philosophy at the university, which is the 20th of June. I will have more time to dedicate myself in here. Well, hard taskmasters, we know that. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, B, and nobody's saying it yet, so I think it falls on me to say it. Don't take this the wrong way, B. This is nothing personal, but we must have our clothes on it. And I know you're saying, me quite rightly, you're a very talented lady. Nobody can take that from you, B. But we must, as I say, come to a close on it. We must get the east back. We must get it carpeted. It must be finished. A commitment. Another thing, uh, and you can probably uh, enlighten us on it as well, B, is we were promised, because when visitors come in, it's OK, you stand up there, very knowledgeable lady in that speaking. There's supposed to be a 10,000-word essay come with this mural. 
Uh, this is not finished. No, however, we are with the mural be, uh, have you started that? Or? You mean with the mural or with uh, the sorry, essay? With the essay okay, with the essay will be completed when the mural and every figure parable is all added to it. Because a parable, an allegory, is something to actually, it's like a metaphor of a true story of uh, an enlightenment, like you say. And because this is not about money or any other power, but knowledge. So the knowledge doesn't come easy with uh, having a look, flicking about a, a magazine, it's reading, it's studying. So it's a deep understanding of a subject which philo Masonic philosophy is nothing but easy. Yeah, I know, and I know you said, you know, because of unforeseen circumstances, you've now got your own, your own business in that light, and, and you know, and, and I know I, I can look at it and I can see there's many, many hours of work to be done yet on it. Like, can you give us what your expectation of a closing date? Uh, there is no longer an expectation. This is one of the reasons was, we were sitting here this evening to, I think, to get a, a closing date on it as well when it was going to be. There is no an expectation as in a date that is going to be postponed. By the end of the summer, this work has to be finished because I need to document the work before I'm, I'm done in here. So by the end of the summer, you'll have this mural completed. That, that's, that, you answered my question, thank you for that. That's, that's You're welcome. <coughs> Having said that, I wouldn't like it to be rushed to, to get it finished, or, you know, rather than getting the copy. I mean, get it right to be satisfaction as well as to us, and I think that's I'm not going to say the, something for that month or whatever. No. I think to get it fit, a good target date, yes, but I, I think get it right. I think it would be, be fair to say that throughout the process there have been delays caused by things that we didn't yeah. anticipate. Um, and we've, 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 we've worked with that and we've got on with it. Lee, can I ask a question? What, see the, between the pillars in the centre there below the keystone, have you got plans to put something in there? You mean in this area? Yeah. Not at the moment if you're not suggesting anything to me. So if you could... I mean, the painting that you see so far is being part of my research and part of each individual's apportation that you guys have been doing. So we, basically we all do in the painting. Uh, what, what I would say being, I think I spoke to you in the early days about this, and I've certainly spoke to James about it, is it's quite dark. I think it needs to be, if you look in any book or look at murals that David Craig and that has done, that was always light. A sort mm -hmm. of sandy stone colour be you, you know the colours yes. that's coming to your mind like you know. So I, I, I would definitely go for I, I think color. the reason that it's light is because I think it's relevant to Masonic light. Yes. Um, but I'm not being bold enough to tell you what you should do there. Yeah. All I'm saying Okay, is I could have a consideration, a thought about that and see how we can I Because that. that's the centrepiece really well, yes. A picture rail coming along there as well, which, which is standing out me. There that, that is. Rail that's coming along the centre of it. Here. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Down, down me. That, which is natural, that rail. Ah, that's okay, yeah. okay. That's yes. sticking out when okay. you're looking at it. And we could do something with that to take the eye away from that. Okay, okay. That, that was always a problem. Maybe it's simple as taking it off. No, 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 that would open a can of worms if we did. We spoke about taking that off. Yes, I remember. Days, and we said it would open a can of, you know, a can of worms. Not yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we could do something definitely about that. Um, as you remember, Brian, I will say, at first time the colors were all gray. And I remember you say, well, it's too gray. And then I discovered through YouTube link, uh, a technique which was called glazing. It's a, a very old technique and that helped me to transform the colors into more creamy and another. So, yes. Yes. yeah, I think little by little, it's like uh, tuning a guitar, little by little I think we will get there. Excuse me if you to check the flies. <laughs> 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 is, the, is the figure that's the master, is, is 
CNI? Yes. Uh, as I say, the old CNI, it will be in a different place, right up above and doing a triangle light and lighting the whole scenario. But he will be pointing at, however, as you see, the hand is not properly done, it's just place, block, it's called, when you block something and you're not detailed. So perhaps what I'm thinking is this arm has to be a bit larger and this arm has to be a bit higher. So I will still reshape the, for the human body in the figures because the human body is another study as the perspective of the lines of the horizon. So, yeah. Oh, totally, a hundred percent. Yes, he did. Same, same legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I, I presume as well be, and you say it's not finished. Where, where the doubly door is and the pinkish colours come down, that will be finished where it's sharper. The lines are straight, and you see how. Oh yes, it? yes. This that's, is. That's what I'm saying. All these. I think, I think, I'm looking forward to seeing the finish. I'm looking forward to Me the too. end of the summer. <laughs> I mean, two years, <laughs> two years here, I you hope. know, which I've learned a lot from you guys and from the painting and from the philosophy behind it. And I think everything will be worth at the end. Would it be fair to say that, um, although you're know, obviously going looking far reaching, look to see it all singing, all dancing, all finished, that been a huge learning curve for yourself as well. It is a, a challenge. A challenge. The challenge being worth doing. A hundred percent. I think I've got to, to extend that. You're right, Rory. It's been a challenge not only in terms of the art, artistic techniques involved. For all of us. Not taught these days, but for a female to be painting a Masonic representation. Well, also, the sheer, the sheer size of it. Oh, the yeah. sheer size and uh, detail. I think for any artist, whether the gender is, I think this is a challenge nowadays because it's something that normally people, I got actually something that I would like to let you know because I found it on the book that you recommended to me um, and I found it really uh, lovely. So on the Lost Scrolls Rediscovered, something like that, the page is 4 to 13 if you want to have a look. Um, it says, sorry. It says uh, they were in the first Masons, they did not question the absence of normal charge imaginary, like you guys doing here, or Lindor's has it. So the first Masons, um, the only biblical imaginary that w they could find uh, as or was easy to identify was a carving of Moses sporting a fine pair of horns. So they were kind of okay with having, because of the secret society, or, uh, so they were completely fine if their temples, they weren't that, you know? And so I think it's a challenge for all of us, not for me, just as, a, as a, my gender female, I think it's a challenge for all of us to have nowadays on, a, uh, on the Masonic temple this type of images that shows your philosophy, even though that for people not knowing what the symbols and, and characters mean, um, it's really good for the First Masons as well to have a lecture to it, and like you say, the essay to it, and things that they can have more information about it and get into it easy. Yeah, Oscar, I, I know that Jim had said to you when he was that this would be forthcoming as well, not an essay, but like a synopsis of of the essay, so that. Would you would you want me to have, let's say, two thousand words about it yeah. so far, and then a posteriori we could no, no, add what some. I mean, what I mean is, uh, perhaps synopsis is a wrong word then, like a, an abridged version, a bit abbreviated. An abstract. Of, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yes, that's that's. If if, for instance, when this is completed after our lodge meetings. If a uh, visiting brother would come and ask something about it, we need to have that knowledge um, because we'll get people coming and really admiring the work that you've done. But I think part of our frustrations were born at the fact that we couldn't tell them a lot about it. Excellent. You've told us a lot about that tonight, um, which is helpful, but if we had that, that you could discuss, yeah. we could, we could yeah. go through it with them and, and explain 
That will also help in terms of if I give you an abstract of what I'm doing so far, then perhaps some of you could add something that I should be painting. So I will make sure that everything is completed. The other thing I would say is you have cherubs there on the left and the second one. They're very, very good and very, I would say excellent. I take it the rest of them will be of the same standard. Exactly. So that's what the proof that Nobby was saying. So there is two different states of on, on, on an oil painting. The first one is blocking, which you block where the feet, leg, and the rest of the body will be. But and you pass on, so you leave it there to dry because the oil it takes longer to dry. So you pass on to the next figure. And what I did there is paint the block in the figures and then eventually, once the oil is a bit more dry, you can reshape it as, a, as an sculpture. My last question to you this evening would be, from now until the end of the summer, you're going to be a very busy lady. And, you know, yes. I, I look forward to the end of the summer this evening. And I will be graduated finally as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The bar is open. Can you adjust Yes. Let's go. Hold on. Thank you. Well done.